So in this problem, we're told to sketch the region enclosed by the given curves and find its area. And so this has been number 15. And so we're told that y equals secant squared x, uh, y equals 8 times the cosine of x. And then we're given uh, our upper and lower bounds, which are going to be minus pi over 3 and pi over 3. And so I just graphed it here on Desmos. You could probably use your graphing calculator, but this is what the curves look like. Uh, the green one is uh, 8 times the cosine of x, and the blue one is secant squared of x. So what we're trying to do is find the area where I'm drawing in right now. And so let's go ahead and do that. So what we got to do is create the integral. And so luckily they tell us uh, our upper and lower bounds. So you can see them graphically right here too. So this is our um, lower bound, this is our upper bound. And so let's just put those in our integral. So minus pi over 3 to pi over 3. Now what we got to do is the function on the inside. We have to take uh, the curve that's on top throughout our interval is going to go first. So uh, 8 times the cosine of x is going to go first. And then we subtract from that uh, the curve that's below it. So in this case, over this interval, it's the blue one, which is secant squared of x. So we subtract secant squared of x from it. And so after we did that, we just set up our integral. So all we got to do is just solve it. So let's find the antiderivative of our inside. So the antiderivative of 8 times the cosine of x is just 8 times the sine of x. And then the antiderivative of minus secant squared of x. We know the derivative of tangent of x is secant squared of x. So secant squared of x is just going to be tangent of x. So it's just going to be minus the tangent of x. And then we're evaluating it from minus pi over 3 to 3 or pi over 3. And so let's just plug it in and solve. So what we want to do is plug in pi over 3, get a value, and then minus whatever minus uh, pi over 3 plugged in is. So plugging in pi over 3, we get 8 times the sine of pi over 3 minus the tangent of pi over 3. And so the sine of pi over 3 is going to be rad 3 over 2. And so we have 8 times the rad 3 over 2 which is just 8 rad 3 over 2, and then we can divide these, so it becomes 4 times the square root of 3 minus uh, the tangent of pi over 3 is going to be rad 3 over 2, because that's the sine of pi over 3, divided by the cosine of pi over 3, which is 1 half. So these, this 2 and this 1 half is going to cancel. It's just going to become rad 3. So we have 4 rad 3 minus rad 3, which is 3 times the square root of 3, so we put that here, 3 times the square root of 3, and then minus whatever minus pi over 3 plugged in is. So let's do that next. So 8 times the sine of minus pi over 3 minus the tangent of minus pi over 3. So the sine of minus pi over 3 is going to be uh, minus rad 3 over 2, but we're multiplying by 8, right? So the 8 and the 2 we'll cancel out each other and we'll just get a 4. So it's going to become minus 4 rad 3. And then we have minus, and then the tangent of minus pi over 3 is going to be uh, minus rad 3 over 2 over 1 half, right? So the sine of minus pi over 3 over the cosine of minus pi over 3. So these are going to cancel to just uh, minus rad 3. And then we're subtracting, right? So minus 4 rad 3 minus rad 3. So they're just going to cancel, and this is going to just be adding. So minus 4 rad 3 plus rad 3 is equal to minus 3 rad 3. So that's what happens when we plug in minus pi over 3. So we're just subtracting it. So we have 3 rad 3, which is pi over 3 minus, and then minus pi over 3, which is minus 3 rad 3. So these are going to cancel out. It's going to become a plus. So we have 3 rad 3 plus 3 rad 3 which equals 6 rad 3. So that's going to be our final answer. So the final answer to this problem is going to be 6 times the square root of 3.